Hello. Ah. <laughs> there it goes. It, yeah, I think it just wasn't up. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Welcome to day three. Day three of VBS. Hello, hello. Here we go. Okay. Today, well, first, we want to remember all the C's we've been working on this week. Well, good. We'll, we'll review it again. So the first one was creation. Do you remember when God created everything, right? We were talking about the animals and the sky and the people and everything. God created it, right? And then yesterday we were talking about corruption and catastrophe when sin entered into the world, right? And now today we're talking about a new C. And today's C is confusion. And confusion is one that I'm really good at. <laughs> it's, it's easy to be confused, right? And, and God doesn't want us to be confused. We need to, to um, be steady on. So this says, um, we have a verse for today. I'm going to read you today's verse before we go over the other verses. We're going to learn the new verse first. We're going to do it out of order. So today's new verse is from Genesis 11:9. Okay, Genesis 11, 9. So it says, Therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth, and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. Does anybody know anything in the Bible about Babel? Oh, I see one. Does anybody else know about Babel? Anybody, anybody? Remember the story? All right, Hannah, tell us about it. What is it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the people were trying to build a tower all the way up to heaven. They thought they could build it all the way up there. And God confused them with different languages is what um, Hannah was saying. So you're going to learn about that in the lesson tonight. But that's what this is talking about here um, in this verse. So I, it looks like a really long verse, but we can learn it with a what? song tonight. Okay, so here is how the song goes. Get ready. Therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth. And from thence did the Lord So now that you know it, let's do it again. Ready? Therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth. And from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. And from so cute. <laughs> um, okay, so now that you sang it, let's see if it's easier to say. Let's try it. Ready? It's Genesis 11, 9. Therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth. And from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. Was it easier now? A little bit easier? Yeah, tomorrow night it'll be even easier. And we'll do it again today, too, hopefully, if we have time. Okay, now I want to do one that you guys have been doing all week. So I want to do 1 Timothy 1.17, but I'm not going to put it up there because I think that you know it. So let's see if you know it. First, stand up. Stand up, stand up, stand up. Wait, wait. Oh, sorry, I want to say it first. 
sorry, sorry, didn't communicate. Okay, so we're going to say it. Let's see if you know how to say it. So 1 Timothy 1.17. Now unto the king eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. One more time. Ready? 1 Timothy 1.17. Now unto the king eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. While we're here, let's do Genesis 1.1. You ready? Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Excellent. Let's do one more while we're here. Let's do Psalm 14.3. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Do you guys remember that one? Do it one more time. Psalm 14.3. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Excellent. And so... Let's do tonight's again, but you can sit down again. Sit down. You had to get a little exercise there. All right, here we go. Ready? Here's tonight's. Ready? Genesis 11, 9. Therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth. And from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad, upon the face of all the earth. Excellent job. You guys are doing great. Great. Okay, let's sing. We're going to skip those first songs right now. Let's sing. Um, oh God, our help in ages past. Do you guys remember that one from this week? Okay. take that away. Can you sing what you just sang? under the shadow of your throne. You're talking about God's throne, right? We're under the shadow of God's throne. Your saints have dwelt secure. Sufficient is your arm alone. Like he's strong enough to protect us. And our defense is sure. He's always going to defend us and protect us, okay? So look at that really good. Start with the under. See if you can do it.
to say. There is a little guy up here who's singing his heart out, and it's just making me so happy. <laughs> I've got to know what his name is. Do you know what you're... John, you are just singing your heart out. It's beautiful. I love it. I love it. It's awesome. Um, and everybody else is singing so great, too. It's not just John. You guys are doing a great job, a really great job. Let's try another one, because I think we have time. Let's do... Oh, we have a new song tonight. Oh, I'll try to get to that one. We've got to sing this new one, too, because the new one's really fun. Hold on, hold on. Ah, this one. This is hilarious. Okay, so we're talking about the Tower of Babel, and then God confused the languages, right? So it used to be that everybody could just understand each other. So in this song it says, God made man to understand each other. Every word was clear to hear and speak. Man could talk together in one language. Greetings were as simple as could be. And it says, hello, 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 hello. And it just says hello a whole bunch of times. You'll see. So then it says, then one day man thought to build a tower. Reaching up to heaven was their plan. God came down to, sc oops, God came down to scatter with confusion. Greetings were not quite so simple then. And then it has these words that look really funny, but they're really words from a different language. The first one says, hola, that's Spanish, right? Bonjour, that's French. Babble, babble, that's like just confusion words. Babble, babble. Then it says, salve, that is Italian. And shalom is from um, Hebrew, right? So then it says, babble, babble. Konnichiwa, that's from Japan, right? Japanese. Babble, babble. So it's got different words in it from different languages because it's God made the people to speak all different languages. So let's try it one time just for fun here. God made man to understand each other. Every word was clear to hear and speak. Man could talk together We'll try to sing some more later because now, and we'll try to get to the song that he wants to sing too, but now we have a special guest speaker tonight, which I don't know if he's Jungle James or if he's uh, I'm, I'm <laughs> just some guy. This is just some other guy. All right, so here we go. I'm going to switch it. It's all technology. Pardon me while I switch devices. Uh, uh. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Hello. Bonjour. Salve. We, we can do all of it. Shalom. Thank you. Glad you're here. Let's open up in prayer, and then we'll get started. 
Father in heaven, our creator, God, we thank you so much that we can have vacation Bible school every day this week. We just thank you for everyone who's come out and who's helping out. And now that we turn to your word, we ask that you would bless it and help us to learn from it and learn more about you. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So we've kind of talked a little bit about what we've learned before, but we'll just show you really quick, right? We learned about creation, the, the big C, the first C kicked all of this off. <laughs> we, we have what we have today because of creation. Then corruption, right? Corruption was sin, man choosing himself instead of choosing God. And then catastrophe is God's judgment on the whole world at that time. Everyone was judged except for eight people, and we know Noah and we learned about the ark and everything that God did to save that remnant. And today, like we said, we're going to talk about confusion. All of this language and, and all of that. Why was it confused? What happened? And we've had an animal guest, so this is, you can think of confusion with scatter the gorilla. So scatter. You'll see him in your classes and other lessons. We'll have more about the gorilla. So he's the animal friend. But I want to start by asking you, what is the tallest building that you've been in? Have you been in a tower? Where? A hotel? Everyone's. That's pretty good. Where? Eiffel Tower. Wow, that is good. Hannah, were you in a tower? Yeah. Which one? The Eiffel Tower in, at King's Dominion? That's a smaller tower. Yeah. Where is it? Oh, the Statue of Liberty. That, those are all great towers. Look, I just wanted to show you a little comparison. So I know you've all been in your house. But your house is about 25 feet tall, you know, give or take. It depends on the roof. It's, it's not, that's not that. That's taller than me. If you go to Richmond, downtown Richmond, the tallest building in Richmond, it's called the Monroe Building, and it's pretty tall. How tall do you think that is? 100 feet, 30 feet, we've got some. Look at this, 449 feet. They were very specific. I don't know why they couldn't just add another foot, make a nice round number, but that's okay. But. This is not the tallest building in the world today. There is a building that is taller. Look at this. It doesn't even fit on the screen, it's so tall. Look at this. It goes up. It's, it's still going. It's still going. It's still going. There's the tip. Yeah, this is the Burj Khalifa in Dubai. 4,000 feet, look at this, 2,717 feet, which is over half a mile. I mean, that's, look at this, there's the Monroe building, and there's the house. So that's pretty big. So why do people build tall buildings? Like, why would you build a tall building? There's a couple of reasons. Well, that's one reason, but that's not why people today, yeah. Yeah, you, could, you can do a lot in a small space. You don't need a lot of land to do a lot. You could put businesses in there, have people live in there. Like, yeah, you could, a lot of things to do in a building. Some, some people build it to try out new materials, to see how strong they can build it. Some other people, they just want to see how high they can go. Like that, that's a pretty tall building. But we're going we're gonna to read some verses. I want to show you. We're going to wind back in Genesis 11, and we're going to talk about this a little bit and get you, get you going. In Genesis 1.11, it says, And the whole earth was of one language and one speech. So you think about it. Ever since creation, that first sea, there was only one language. I mean, all that time, people just spoke the same language. And you know what happens when people speak the same language? 
they stay together, right? And but what happens when people stay together? They sin together. <laughs> the more compact you are, the more you're likely to rub off on each other. And we're corrupted, just like they were. And they said, in the, the next part, we're going to skip ahead, it says, they said, go to, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven, and let us make a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. Why did these people want to build a tower? It wasn't to try out new building materials and to do restaurants. To reach heaven. That's right. They wanted to make a name for themselves. They, they rejected God. They said it's all about us. And we want to stay together where we can, we can talk to each other. And Why go anywhere else? But God, God didn't want that. Look at this. In 11.6, it says, And the Lord said, Behold, all the people is one, and they have one language. And this they begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them, which they have imagined to do. God saw that their sin would even get stronger because of the common language. Because they could do anything. They could do some great things. In fact, even today, we've done some great things. We've built rockets and trains and all sorts of technology. But there's also so great evil that comes with a lot of that too. And so what did God do? He said, go to, let us go down. And they confound their language that they may not understand one another's speech. God passed judgment on them. He confused the languages. That was his solution. And I kind of want to show you a little bit of how that works. So I've got a little thing. Now, you're going to stay there because you can't all come up here and help me. But I have some helpers. Mr. Kingston, where are you? And Mr. Armando, where are you? Come on up. Now, <clears throat> I hope you can see this. All right, Mr. Kingston, let's see. Yeah, you can stand there. Mr. Armando, stand right here. This is your station. This is, this is all yours. And now, let me... Let me let me give you a little, a little bit. This is the map. Here we are. We're the dot. That's, a, that's us. Mr. Kingston, he speaks English. Mr. Armando, he speaks English. But they also speak other languages you may not know. Mr. Kingston speaks a language from India. That's where he's from. Tamil is the name of it. Mr. Castro speaks Spanish, which I don't have a dot on there. But Spanish is spoken many places. That's good. It's, it's all over, the South America, all over here, here. There's a lot of places they speak Spanish. But what I want to show you is we're going to have Mr. Kingston. He's in charge of this whole thing. So he's going to, I've got him. He's going to ask Mr. Armando to, to do some things with these objects. And first, we're going to do it in, in English because that's how it was one language. And we'll see if he can do it. So, this is a test. Give me time. Mr. Armando, please move the bottle to the left of the bag. That was, that was excellent, right? We could get a lot done if we could do this. This is good. Actually, you could come to my house. There's a lot of things to organize. That's good. And he can move them. That's it. We've now proven that. All right. So, if God confused the languages, well, not me, but... So we would like you to go to the next thing to do in your language, and you can do what he says. And if you need to ask him questions, you can ask him in your language to get some clarity. And we'll see. Go ahead. Armando, You can ask him questions, just, just in, in your language. I, I don't know. This is not, we're, we're talking up here. This is the stuff that we need to work. Okay, go to the next one. Try the next one. I'm assuming he, well, let's see.
You can tell him. No, eso no es lo que él quería. No habla inglés. No. Bueno, entonces lo devuelvo. All right. La last one. We'll just do, do the third one. We'll see. He's got to get the third one. <laughs> this is not. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Gracias and good night. No, thank you. Thank you very much. Gracias. I know a little Spanish, but that's not. Yeah, so look, so at first, move the bottle to the left of the bag. That was very easy. But the, he asked him the next thing. He said, what do you think is in the bag? That was the first question. He was asking him, what do you think is in it? And he went off over there. <laughs> the next one was, open the bag. And he took it over there. And then he's like, give me what's in the bag. So very simple instructions, right? It wasn't very complicated. No, so what do you think would happen if God confused the languages? What do you think happened to building the tower? Did anything, anything, get, anything get done? Yeah, it's fine. Look at this, Genesis 1, 8, or 11, 8. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. So confusing the languages did two things. It stopped building the tower, and that was the prideful rebellion of people, so that, that stopped. They didn't go to the heavens. And then it spread people all over the earth, and they developed their, the languages and cultures that we see today. So here's the thing I would like you to take away from this. We always sin. People sin. Just, God had just passed judgment with a flood over the entire earth. And these were the descendants. They knew about it, and yet they continued to rebel against God. People went right back to what they were doing before, and, and we are like that too. We sin every day. And yet, God is merciful, right? He could have destroyed them for rebelling. He destroyed the whole world, but he didn't. He only changed the languages, and that was enough to scatter people and, and disrupt what they were doing. So think about this. God is still merciful today. And aren't you glad that he doesn't pass judgment every time you mess up? You might get correction from your parents if, when you mess up and things like that. But that's even God's mercy. And it's to get you to remember your heart is not right towards God. But even so, there's a final judgment coming. And we're going to stand before the creator God. And will you be guilty or innocent? And God is so merciful that he made a way for you to be innocent. He sent his son Jesus, who lived a perfect, sinless, as a perfect sinless man, to die as payment for your sins. And if you believe in the Lord Jesus, that he covers your sins, you will be saved from that final judgment. So you have a choice. Will you try to make a name for yourself in what you do and all the things that you want to accomplish in your life? Or will you accept Jesus as your Savior? And if you've already accepted Jesus as your Savior, then live for him. Obey your parents, show kindness to others, and tell people on how they can trust Jesus too. So let's pray, and we'll close out our lesson for today. Father in heaven, thank you so much for your word that we can read and even learn about these people from thousands of years ago that lived and that you dealt with and that we can see your character and we can trust you and that you've made a way for us to live with you forever in your great mercy. We just thank you for that. Thank you for this lesson and ask that you would bless the rest of our day here at VBS. Okay, now it's time for our skit. Have you been waiting for the skit? I want to know what's going to happen because I haven't seen it. So I'm excited. Oh, it's going to be great.
Well, Sam, that was some bump. My hip is out. My back is out. And I am out of bandages. <sighs> well, you're looking good already. It seems like you're recovering. Who would have thought Miss Cassidy would take us down uh, Fortune's Fork? I know, we were headed for a peaceful sail to the beautiful Riviera Falls, and now we're going down Fortune's Fork. You never liked Fortune's Fork. I know, for good reason. Because Fortune's Fork is dangerous? Oh, yeah. And that no one ever found a lost treasure? Does it even exist? And that anyone sailing down Fortune's Fork has never returned? This does not look good for us. Well, since we're here, Sam, it's incredible. Wow. Look at the size of those hummingbirds. Uh, Mr. James? Oh, yeah. I mean, wow, even the poison dart frogs? There's a herd of them. Well, I've heard of them. Yeah. And then, oh, oh. hi. Well, Miss Cassidy, what do you have to say for yourself? Yeah, we're doomed. <laughs> Hardly. There's an ancient treasure at the end of Fortune's Fork, and I'm going to be the first to find it. Or my name isn't Cassidy Cash. How do you know no one has already found it? If they had, it would have been all over the internet. But anyone selling down Fortune's Fork has never returned. I thought they just got bored, went home, and took up crocheting. No. Miss Cassidy, many times the choices we make seem right. But in the end, they lead to death. But nothing has happened to us yet. Look at the bright sun, the beautiful animals, even the poison ones. It's smooth sailing. But sin is just like that. It might seem good at first, but it's not. Jesus can rescue you from the penalty of sin. Mr. James? One minute, Sam. Mr. James, how strong is our boat? It's very strong, Sam. Well, that's good. Hey, why do you ask? We're about to hit a large, a large rock in the middle of the river. Ah, look out! <laughs> well, there goes the main mast. At least we're not sinking yet. You're right, Sam. We're doomed. Oh, makes Miss Cassidy, there's still hope for us. There's still hope. We can sing the song that we were going to sing a minute ago, which was, what was it? What was the one you wanted to sing? Ah, uh, no? What was the one you wanted to sing? The messing up song. The messing up song. Okay, got it. We'll do it. Oh, perfect. Thank you. All right. Remember this? Man could live in the garden without messing it up. Man could handle creation without messing it up. All through the Bible we see that man is sick and messing it up. That's such a great song. You did a great job singing that. I think we could almost do that without looking, but we won't do it right now. Well, maybe tomorrow we'll try it without looking. Let's try one more since we have time. Let's do this one today that we haven't done. You want 
to know the love of Jesus deep down in your heart. You want to get to know him, but you don't know where to start. You'd like to live forever through the promise that he gave. You wonder what must they do to be saved. And then great. That was really great. I think it's time to go out to our outside time. So let's have the first row with the littlest kiddos go first to the door like we did before. Okay, and then the eagles, the second kiddos can go behind them. And then how about if the big kids go put your stuff in your classroom and then you can meet them outside? That would be perfect. <laughs> 